Good evening. Welcome to our regular scheduled board meeting for August the 9th. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Please be seated. If there's anybody who wishes to be an unscheduled speaker, the forms are in the back. If you'd fill them out and bring them up to Ms. Harrison before we get to the regular agenda. Mr. Jen, Special Orders of Business. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to ask Dr. Kevin Perry to come on up. He's going to introduce the Governor Shine Award recipient, Mr. Jeffrey Johnson, who was our 2017 Teacher of the Year. Maybe I just did it for him. And uh, we have some other recognitions as well after that. Madam Chair, School Board members, Mr. Gent, this evening we would like to congratulate Mr. Jeffrey Johnson, who is an exceptional student education teacher at Dell Caston Educational Complex. Last week, during a meeting of Florida's cabinet, Governor Rick Scott recognized five 2017 Teachers of the Year from across the state with the Governor's Shine Award. The Shine Award is presented to teachers and administrators in Florida who make a significant contribution to the field of education. Governor Rick Scott said, I am proud to recognize, the five, recognize five of Florida's top educators today for their commitment to making sure their students are prepared to succeed in the classroom and future careers. As 2017 Teachers of the Year, they are an outstanding example of the many hardworking educators across the state that are doing all they can to give our students the highest quality education. We're so glad that St. Lucie Public Schools was one of those five recognized in the person of our Teacher of the Year, Mr. Jeff Johnson. Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim. Our star awards for this evening, Angela, Angela LaRose, Assistive Technology Assistant Fiddlers, and Christine Jordan, Administrative Assistant Fiddlers. And <laughs> as they are coming, Angie and Chris have provided stellar customer service to teachers and parents in St. Lucie County for over 10 years. They provide information and classroom support materials for students ages 3 through 22 in both general education and ESC settings. You will never hear them say, I don't know, or I can't do that. They use their resources to find answers and provide the support requested. When teachers request visuals for their classrooms, Angie will send samples, give choices, then prepare and deliver the requested materials almost immediately. Angie and Chris also give selflessly of their free time and can be found supporting conferences and events that take place on Saturdays or after school hours. Both Angie and Chris perform their duties and smiles with a delightful sense of humor. Thank you, ladies. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Angela Rose and Christine Jordan. Thank you and congratulations to all of our recipients tonight. We do have one final presentation and at this time I'm going to invite Mr. Bill Thomason to the podium to make that presentation. Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Gent, Mr. and Mrs. Ray LeLou are here tonight to donate an automatic external defibrillator to our school system. Mr. and Mrs. LeLou are not strangers to this board. They've been here before. They've worked with us. Their generosity and advocacy for children is just beyond belief of what they do continually to support us. This defibrillator is being donated in memory of their daughter, Jessica, who was a student at St. Lucie West Centennial High School. The LeLous have founded the Jessica Clinton MVP Foundation, and they continue their advocacy throughout the community working to bring knowledge and expertise of individuals about the importance of the life-saving devices. Mrs. Lelou has also lobbied the Florida legislature to make sure that legislation has been passed to ensure all schools will be equipped with these devices. We're very grateful for this donation and they also are going to be donating a, tonight in association with Cardiac Science another defibrillator to our school system, so there will be two of them donated. The one from the Lalou family tonight will go to Southern Oaks Middle School, so we have Principal Hargadine here tonight to accept that as well, but it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Ray Lalou. Well, it's our pleasure to be here to donate this defibrillator to you tonight. Uh, as I was sitting there, I was uh, thinking back in the first time we were here, uh, we were donating four defibrillators and, and the work that we had gone through and the effort that we had gone through just trying to get four defibrillators in here. And over these years, and I tell you, the years do fly by really fast. Um, you know, we've, I think we've probably donated about 65 def defibrillators by now. And thank you, thank you. And it's amazing to me to see how how St. Lucie County has been so aggressive in adding to the arsenal and making sure that all the schools have adequate amount of defibrillators in there. So I commend you for that. Um, I believe right now you're changing out 28 of the original AEDs that that came in. So um, congratulations on that. Madam Chair, um, I know Mr. Johnson's still here, and I, we gave him a plaque tonight just for everybody in the audience. You saw the picture that was up on the, um, on the screen with uh, Mr. Johnson up with the governor and his cabinet. I believe it was, um, was the last week or the week before last, but the last few days, and uh, representing our county. And um, I had the opportunity to see him on Friday as he addressed um, some of our teachers of the year, and again yesterday over at Dale Cassins, and he's really been a great ambassador. Um, for our school district and represents what's best about all of our instructors and is just a very, very special, special individual that his students are very fortunate to have in front of him. And uh, so I just again wanted to congratulate him on a, on a job well done representing us and what he does every day in the classroom. Thank you. We have uh, 
wonderful ambassadors, <clears throat> both within the community and within our force. So thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> CTA report, Ms. Rodriguez. Good evening. Um, I have just a couple of things to address with you tonight. First, um, I'm going to be running back to my office after this meeting because we're in the middle of ratification. We've had nonstop folks in our office um, today. And um, I'm just wanting to tell you how excited people are um, that we have a contract that's been settled before um, school started and that they will be hopefully seeing their uh, ratified bonus and raise in their pay coming up. Uh, so that's really exciting. We're one of the only in the state, as you, I'm sure you're aware, that have kind of gotten our uh, contract ratified and um, done as well as we have. So that's, again, I want to commend your folks on the negotiating team and my folks on the nego negotiating team for getting that work done, because that was not easy, even though we make it look like that. Um, I also wanted to mention that we participated in two days of NTO last week and um, got to meet the 266 plus brand new teachers. Um, it's funny when you stand in front of them, you know, and you can kind of picture where you were, in my case, 27 years ago, um, when it was maybe six of us in the old school board office <laughs> uh, on Delaware Avenue and the difference. Um, but the, what's not different is their sense of excitement and joy that they've made it to that place. And I um, asked, if, for those of you that didn't, weren't there, uh, I asked them to make a commitment to us that before they leave us, before they quit, that they call someone, reach out for help, and I also asked district personnel and principals to be uh, there for them, to be supportive of them. That was the commitment we were making to each other. I also sent um, a message to all of my members and also to all of my worksite leaders and asked them to be the, the safety net that we all, some of us, we're fortunate enough to have and the reasons that we're all still here for all of those people to reach out and, and uh, make it easier for those new people in our district. One of the things that we know is between the media and probably every person that they know tried to talk them out of being a teacher and those folks are here regardless, especially those young ones. Uh, so we want to make sure that we, we keep them. And what I'm going to ask you all to make a commitment to do is to continue to be an advocate for educators in St. Lucie County and in the state. Um, it's not easy and it's not going to get any easier, but we all need to work together to make sure that that 266 stays with us and we don't have to keep hiring 266. Um, as far as negotiations are concerned, we have some future work to do and I know that we'll um, get there. I'm anxious to begin uh, continued work through our collaborative process. We're starting that, I'm sure as you're aware, with some training that's going to take place coming up in the next couple of months uh, for all of our teams since we've got so many new folks, more so on the district side than on the union side, but it's always good for all of us to have that, that checkup. So we're looking forward to that. All in all, I'm really looking forward to a, a positive school year. Just so you know, my kids go in middle school, so I'm the one with the, yeah, I'm the one with the eyes going crazy because it's a, it's a big thing for mama. You have no idea. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, and I have mentioned this to individual school board members, and I'm going to mention it here, um, as I said I was going to, uh, is that the second school board meeting of the month that you have, the daytime school board meeting, is currently not being taped meaning that the public cannot see it. And I'm not sure if you're aware of how many folks actually go on to our district website to watch the school board meetings to see what's going on. And I think they have the right to do that. Um, a lot of really good conversation happens at those meetings, so I'm asking you once again to um, please look into making that happen. Um, I know you're having those meetings in the sunshine technically, but having the meeting at 9 o'clock when the majority of the people that not only work for you but work out in the community can, cannot attend, there's never anybody in those meetings except for me and usually um, folks from my staff. So I'd like to just encourage you to consider that. Uh, thank you. And the uh, last request is being addressed. So thank you. Uh, CWA? <clears throat> We're on to consent agenda. I'll uh, adopt, uh, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented and moved by Ms. Holly. Second. 
Second. Second by Mr. Ingersoll. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Mr. Gent, your recommendation, please. Recommend the board approve the <coughs> consent agenda as submitted. We have a recommendation from the superintendent. Is there anything that you wish to pull for separate vote or discussion? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. moved by Ms. Hilson. Second by Ms. Holly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Mr. Jen, your report, please. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Rivers Lewis to please come up to the podium. Mr. Lewis has been recommended for the uh, director in HR, and Mr. Lewis comes to us from Orange County, where he is currently the assistant director in employee relations, and before that he was the senior manager in employee relations. I believe he's had uh, 10 years in Orange County and um, brings a lot of wealth uh, and knowledge to us, especially in an area that we have a, a need. So I'd like to introduce him to you at this time and ask him if he'd like to say a few words. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Board Members, Superintendent Gent, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for allowing me to join your team. I can tell already that it is a great team to um, work for, and I look forward to working with all of you as we work to achieve our, the district's vision, mission, and goals. Thank you. I gave you a minute, but you only wanted 10 seconds, so that's... <laughs> Well, we can that's my kind of guy. I've already heard that we don't go as long as we do in Orange County, so I was right. making sure. <laughs> We're good. Thank you. Thanks so much, and welcome aboard. All right. Thank you. A couple of other things. Um, as everybody is aware, if you can look around, uh, I appreciate the uh, school staffs that are here tonight. I see some principals and uh, some administrators that are here, and this is uh, one of the busiest times, as our teachers reported yesterday, and we had an opportunity to go out to several schools. Uh, I did, and, and our staff as well, to, uh, to welcome them. Today we've had uh, intensive uh, staff development going on all over the county, so this is a great time of the year. Um, our, uh, we've reached out to our parents through transportation. They've made phone calls to the homes, and um, we'll begin uh, following up this weekend, and we are geared to start school um, bright and early Monday morning, uh, the 15th, right? Right, Todd? Okay, you awake? Okay. And uh, the 15th, and so this is really an exciting time. We finished up what I thought was a great year last year, and we want to keep that momentum going this year. As, as Vicki mentioned, we've uh, uh, settled with uh, the teachers union. We've tried to put, take all the barriers out of the way, or all the, all the bargaining groups for that matter. And I uh, just appreciate uh, what, our, what our administrators and teachers do and all of our staffs do. Got a chance to welcome the bus drivers back uh, this morning, and they're, they're raring to go. They were excited. And uh, I'm pumped up, as, as everyone is when we come back, and to really benefit our students and our community. So uh, it's a great time of the year. We have some open houses. Tomorrow night will be, I believe, the um, high schools and middle schools in Lincoln Park. And then the next night will be the K-8s and the elementary schools. And uh, then the, um, we welcomed our school leaders back last week. Most of the board members were able to attend that. We had, as Vicki mentioned, the, the new teacher orientation. Appreciate uh, Ms. Hensley. Um, Ms. Hilson coming out on, on two different days to, uh, to talk to our folks. And um, we kicked off our Project SOARS, which you were made aware of uh, just this week as well. And more information will be going out. We'll be working with our community members to, uh, to come in and help us close our gaps with our, with our third graders. We'll be working with big brothers and big sisters and uh, Judy Miller's group. So we're looking forward to that. Recruitment and retention, we have approximately, because uh, it changes every minute, 27 vacancies. At this time last year, it was at 70. So we feel we're in a much better place. Um, I don't believe that the news media gave us the, the, the they, had a, they did an article on the three counties and uh, was really misleading when he opened up and mentioned that a school had 16 vacancies and that was at the end of the year through attrition and retirements and those kinds of things. So it was a t somewhat slanted, tainted uh, article and, and I had, had the opportunity to let the, the reporter know about that as well in per uh, over the phone. But uh, we do have a, um, a good story to tell, and, and the principal has been working very, very hard and, um, and, and, and getting quality candidates here, and they'll continue to do that. Uh, some of the schools they went out to uh, yesterday, they had their meetings off campus, which is always nice as well to, uh, to welcome the teachers back. So we're in, we're in a good shape there. Uh, the, um, make sure I'm not missing anything here. The, uh, 
And I just want to thank um, not only the principals, but the HR team. We've made some changes there this year, as you're aware, and uh, they're paying off right now as we um, try to gear up and, and open the school center. And again, to the principals, thanks for coming out tonight. I really didn't expect to see you uh, because I know you guys, um, nobody knows what it's like uh, these, these first, it's, it's sleepless nights. And uh, if anybody hasn't had a sleepless night yet, then they'll have one. The teachers will on Sunday night. Everybody gets excited. But I appreciate their efforts, I see some of them have their administrators here with them as well. So just know that from my team to yours and from the school board, we appreciate what you're doing to, to have a positive opening the first day of school and uh, looking forward to a great 2016-17 school year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jim. <clears throat> no item for our attorney. School board members' comments or reports. And then, Ms. Wilson. Just a thank you to our team as well as the union team for the negotiations and the settlement so early, so wonderful. I think everybody did a great job and it just starts the, the new school year off in a, really, in a really positive way, so I appreciate that. Um, the new teacher program that I was able to attend was wonderful, seeing all those faces with excitement and I was able to talk to one young lady, I won't mention her name, who was a teacher uh, formally, and I, I sometimes I forget when I go to new teacher orientation, it may be teachers that have left our county and come back. And she happened to be one who had left um, probably about eight years ago and came back and she said, I'm so excited because there's so many supports in place. And she said when I was here before, and of course she was younger as well, and she's probably you know, taught in other places, but she said now I feel like I real, really have a strong support system and I'm ready to go. So that's you know, to all the people that made that possible with all the supports, I think that speaks highly for, for all of you. Thank you. Uh, I only have a, a couple of things. One would be the Treasure Coast Transportation Council met this morning. Uh, we have requested that, uh, I won't use the acronyms, but actual money that will go to fix uh, roadways that will include uh, bicycle paths and sidewalks where there's not safe passage right now. And we have that on our long range plan locally. That's being, it's in Tallahassee right now. As soon as that plan is approved, it'll come back to us and at the December meeting we'll adopt that and then we'll try to start putting money into the plan to make sure that the priority of safe passage for kids is, uh, is uh, implemented. Also the Children's Services Council, we did our strategic planning months ago, we found that infant mental health was a gap we are now filling that gap. We renegotiated a few contracts with some of our agencies. And so we have that, we did the contract last week, uh, signed the contract with an agency that will start doing uh, infant mental health, which is something that is very needed in our community. So that's a real positive step. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is the superintendent's overall performance. Does anybody have anything they wanna say or do you just wanna make a motion? It's either satisfactory or satisfactory. Those are only two choices. I make a motion to approve the superintendent contract for next year. Okay. I'll say woohoo and second it. <laughs> I won't call the principal, but they're tired. So we have a motion and a second to accept the satisfactory uh, recommendation. Anybody have a comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Uh, thank you. It's, a good thing. it's unanimous. And uh, we know one year is not a trend, but we know that one year for us is a trend. So thank you very much. Uh, we have no unscheduled speakers, and we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>